Hi everyone, welcome to another episode. In this one we're going to be reacting to Band of Brothers episode 7 called The Breaking Point. Uh, recap. Um, essentially the last episode was we were following a medic, uh, mm, Eugene, Eugene. Yeah. Rowe I think his name was. Um, and they were in Baston. Bas Baston? The forest, it's a mm. Belgian forest obviously. So it's basically following him and how he was essentially out of me out of medical supplies the in most of the entire episode it was mm. kind of trading you know looking for scissors getting boots but essentially it was it followed him through the um through that episode and it was kind of sad because he met someone uh, about that nurse, nurse isn't it um in the little town and and unfortunately she dies mm. uh, th through bombings she don't uh, want to be there. She doesn't think she's making enough of a difference. She doesn't want to see another body and she just wants to get out of there. And yeah, I thought there'd be a happier ending. But, um, the reality yeah. of, of war is doesn't really yeah. give you And that. I think a lot of the soldiers that were there were just really not equipped really well. There no winter gear, mm. no um, kind of medical supplies were low. I think there was a point where ammunition was quite low as well. Um, and then there was that speech over Christmas that the general gave. Um, it was like a, a very short, short, short message. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that was essentially but also it, the fact that, that um, it seemed like we were surrounded, but um, we're not surrendering. Uh, Merry Christmas is yeah. essentially what it what it was. Um, oh, stay, stay your ground, basically. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it, because the conditions were so bad, soldiers were just wandering around. Yeah. Germans yeah. were wandering into on, on, on the Allied side, and you know the Allies were walking uh, around. Walk they, around, they accidentally like stumble into stumble a German. Uh, yeah, that was that was crazy. Um, but yeah, it was mainly following Eugene and the life of a medic in, in especially in Bastogne and that, that specific time in December mm. where it's just heavy snowfall. He doesn't have enough serrets. He's just going around begging and borrowing and stealing yeah. whatever he can. Um, and um, it's just essentially uh, every now and then going back to the to town to just resupply and stuff or get a hot meal whatever, whatever. but then get, yeah. but then he's like i need to get back out there i need to get back out there and it's just um... i think i think it's the depiction of what the troops were going through i think what hit home hard was when the nurse was saying that they were using bed sheets as bandages whatever they can it, man whatever they yeah, can, whatever you whatever can. They i think can. that that really that was quite and that, and that we got that sort of full circle at the end where um her her headband or her yeah. headscarf i should say yeah. um he finds it in the rubble where the the the, the church or has been yeah, been blown window. up yeah. and um i can't remember who it is but they've hurt their hand and he goes to find a bandage and he finds her headscarf and he rips it up yeah. to make her because what else are you going to use and it's Oh, it's one of them sort of heartbreaking yeah. scenes. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, let's see what happens um, in this one. Uh, episode seven, The Breaking Point. Let's check it out. I've seen death. I've seen my friends, my men being killed. It doesn't take too many days of that, and you change dramatically. We didn't have much ammunition. It's cold. We didn't have any clothes. You couldn't build a fire. To build a fire, some crazy thing to shoot at you. Yeah, that's messed up as well. They couldn't mm. build fire. Soldier there, here, ours, theirs. Death was all over. You don't have a chance when your friends go down, you know, to to really take care of them. Because you might get shot. Mm. I had a lot of trouble in later life. Those events would come back and. And you never forget them. <laughs> That's hard. That's horrifying. No, oh, January 2nd, 1945. We're still in the forest. The forest, yeah. After holding the line at Bastogne, Easy Company was once again called on to help push the Germans back through the bulge. Always calling Easy Company. E Company was sent to clear the Bois Jacques. 
the woods near the yeah. town of Foy, in preparation for what we all knew would be the eventual assault on Foy itself. Oh god, I shut it. Oh god. I thought that was a, I thought that was a gun. Oh, oh, that was a head shot. A Luger. Is he going to give it to um, Malaki? As we dug in, he went from foxhole to foxhole, telling everyone just how he'd finally got one. Okay. Where's Dyke? He's, uh, he's around. But where the hell does he ever go? I don't know, but I wish he'd stay the hell there. I'd be mean, nice if he took Lieutenant Shane with him, too. Shut up, boys. Damn. Okay, what's that? Easy. Is it true we shot? Sniper? No, no, he he shot himself. What? Oh, with the loot? Oh, yeah. oh my god. You do with a load of gun in your pants. Shit, fuck, I wasn't touching it or nothing. Damn it, damn it. Damn it. Oh, so he had it in his trousers and it went off. I don't look who fine. Let me fly. Don't worry about it. It's on his upper thigh, right? Yeah. Is it Nick Desartery? Take it easy. Stay What's there, going on? Doc. He's dying. Doc. How is he dead from a leg wound? In your leg, then you. But we didn't see like a massive gush of blood. Did we? Quite a lot there. He was wearing so many clothes we couldn't tell how bad he was bleeding. Oh. By the time we got him to the aid did. station, he was already dead. Yeah. Bullet cut the main artery in his leg, sir. Yeah, like yeah. you said. Damn, that was quick. Where's Dyke? want to see him sir no i just would have expected to get this kind of news from him winters is winters shivering is. oh my god can't even make a fire there were long stretches where we didn't know where lieutenant dyke was he disappeared go off on these walks for hours at a time how can you do that though confidently as well mm -hmm. and i want tight security around the company cp lieutenant james that understood all right dyke wasn't a bad leader because he made bad decisions he was a bad leader because he made no decisions. That's definitely a bad leader. What's the formation you want us to go for? At present, as per usual, but I'll clarify that with you at a later time, Lieutenant Compton. Yes, sir. Okay, that doesn't sound confident at all, does it? Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta make a call. Is he just... He's a bit clueless. Who made him leader? I think it was natural. Like he said, the others, it fell to him, isn't it? Yeah, but as in, well, how did it? How did it just naturally fall to him? That's Dyke bad. Dyke was the favorite of somebody at division. Okay, there we go. He'd been sent down to yeah, E Company favorite. to get some combat experience. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him. That's never good for anyone. Got to do all this with a CEO who's got his head so far up his fucking ass that lump in his throat is his goddamn nose. <laughs> That's a good one. I wouldn't want to be a replacement officer coming in here. You're getting thrown in with a group of guys who've known each other for what, two years? Are you supposed to just show up and lead them? How's the guy do that? Confidence? I really hope to gain the respect of the toughest. I mean, he's doing well because he's obviously covering for him as well when he knows he's not always there. You guys don't worry about Dyke. All right? Yeah. We all do our jobs, everything will be fine. They've done the makeup so well. It's so cold, and they look like ghosts, and the only yeah. pink you get is that slight bit on their nose. This and company the scar. First sergeant, it was my yeah. job. This has got some of this. Not to protect Dyke, but to protect the integrity of the company. Division's not going to let me replace him just because I got a bad feeling about him. Even if they would, who'd I put in his place? Not that it matters anyway, because I can't get rid of Dyke. He knows people up top, mate. You're not going to be able to get rid of him that easy. Buck Compton would have been the best choice to run easy. Yeah. Winters have been able to get rid of Dyke. But to be honest, Buck wasn't the same soldier he'd been before he got shot in Hollywood. I was going to say, Buck isn't. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Doesn't have, look like he's got PTSD, but. Okay, maybe he does. Um... It's quick, because in the last episode, he was quite sp a little bit spaced out, but in this one, he seems like overly happy. Not happy, but. Completely different. Soldier. I think it was a mixture of the war and the fact that his. His girlfriend or wife, or I think it was girlfriend, left him. Left him, Some, yeah. Yeah, yeah she did, yeah. When getting shot at that guard, it was being in that hospital. I've been there, okay? How'd you reckon that's what it is? It ain't pretty. Mm hmm. Yeah. But calm is fine. 
I heard about Hubler. Shame. Uh, yes, sir. Look who showed up. Where'd you grow up? Huntington, West Virginia. Huntington? Yes, sir. I don't know it. Where are you from, sir? I just walked off. People scales. <laughs> yeah. F. Division has decided to pluck one officer from each regiment that served in the heroic defense of Bastogne. Send it back to the States on a 30-day furlough. Turns out I've okay. been plucked. Oh, well done to you the Knicks. I'm sure we can find an officer somewhere in this battalion who could use a long trip home. That's really nice of him. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anybody who deserves this more. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, Peacock's going back. To come by here, y'all remembered his file for the camera. Got to keep the morale up for them folks back home. How do I feel about being rescued by Patton? I'd feel pretty peachy about it if it wasn't for one thing. We didn't need to be fucking rescued by Patton. That's the thing, he was talking about that. They didn't need to be... Yeah. Rescued. Saved. Yeah, saved. Get yourself back to the aid station. Heal up. I'd really like to head back with the fellas, sir. I don't want to leave your brother's side. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys been injured? It's called wounded, Peanut. Injured is when you fall out of a tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> Enough crap flying around here, you're bound to get dinged sometime. Almost every single one of these guys has been hit the at least once. amount of dents in his helmet. Yeah, I, was, I did, I realised that. It can't be shots, can it? It must be like... It look like it. Buck got shot in his rather large butt in Holland. <laughs> yeah, kind of an easy company tradition getting shot in the ass. Four holes. Four, four wounds. Four holes. Why? <laughs> yeah, one bullet. Two. January 3rd, most of E Company headed back to our old position in the woods overlooking Foy. Hey, be careful if he offers you a Is cigarette. That... What are they talking about? <laughs> <That's my beer. laughs> Who offers us a cigarette? Yeah, it's Michael Fassbender. Spears. Michael Fassbender, yeah, that's it, yeah. Spears was one of the platoon leaders in D Company. Oh, yeah, this guy. He was already a legend. Cold as ice. Another one about him giving cigarettes to 20 German POWs before killing him. What are you men doing out here? We're watching the line, sir. Oh, anyone care for smoke? Oh, God, that's scary. <laughs> it's a scary sentence coming out of his mouth. <laughs> it's fake. No, I'm just going to brush my teeth. <laughs> Ten spears into the Terminator. Someone's going to die. Someone's going to fucking die. What happened? God, oh, look at this shit. One of those first battalion fuckers took a dump in my foxhole! <laughs> oh my god, that must be right. That's hilarious. There were signs of tree bursts everywhere. That got our attention. Oh, so this is there where they were in the, in the last episode. Hmm. Looking across the field at Foy, I could see enemy troops. I still couldn't see their artillery, but I knew it was down. Yeah, it's got to be there hidden. Must be in those little... Bushes. Hold the line here. We're gonna strengthen our covers and we're gonna hang in. We're not gonna fall back. What's he doing? He's just staring into space, though. Right, Lieutenant? Fine. You all take care of it. I gotta go talk to Regiment. Oh, I don't like him. Oh, I don't like him. Doesn't look like he's with it. He thinks it's a little vacation, doesn't he? The way he's standing, yeah. I'll get you some more branches. I appreciate that. Yeah. Doesn't it make it more um obvious if you have like a like a clump of tree in one area, like branches? Like, okay, that's definitely a cover. I suppose it depends because they've shelled it so much. They're just like it's True. just lying around. It. Oh no! Oh, oh, that's too close. Oh, they're actually. Oh god, who was oh. that? Was that Buck? Yeah, but he's. Oh my god, that was too close. Oh, but... oh. well, he's, he's not gonna fall on top yeah. of it. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to get out of that. Joe, get in oh. a freaking foxhole. That must be so dangerous, though, because the tree actively acts as a weapon then. Because yeah, because it splinters out, yeah. If I'd known what happened to Joe Toy. <laughs> what do you mean? Wow. Toy's just... Joe's just been covered by... Oh, he's alive. You're okay, Joe. You're okay, Joe. 
Joe, you're okay. Get up. Oh my god. Ooh. Can we get to him? The crowds are trying to draw us out in the open. Oh my god, they're just gonna leave. Can someone see him? If they did, if they had line of sight, they would. You can't. Oh my god, he needs to. They need to. I don't know. I don't know what you do. What do you do? Oh man. I was gonna say you need to stem the flow of blood coming out, like. Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! Stay in your foxholes! It's too late. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, he's under the tree. The tree landed on him, yeah. Mm. It'd be safe from shelling, but he can't get out. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh. Come on. Oh. Come on, pal. I really hope he makes it. Come on, Joe, I got you. Oh. He needs help. The wound isn't cauterized. He'd be constantly bleeding. I think I overdid it on a cover for my foxhole. <laughs> it's coming! Oh, my God, not again. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be there! I'll be there. Oh no! Okay, so he fell back in the... How bad is it? How bad is it? They've both lost their legs. No, I think Garnier has injured his leg, but I don't think he's... This is a shit show. You get things organized here. I'm gonna go for help. Oh, what are you... What, do, what are you... What? Fucking, someone slap him. What the... He's essentially running away. Yeah. Ben is still alive. I know that. Joe, I don't know where yeah. Joe... Joe's there. They're both there. Alive, though. Oh, no. Surely. He's hit him hard again. Okay, so there is a medic there. Oh, his leg's twitching. Yeah, Bell's lost his leg. Oh. Yeah. How's Buck? He's fine. You sure? Yes, he's fine. Really? I should probably go talk to him now. Where is he? He didn't look fine. Yeah, he's he's all sorts of messed up, man. He needed to have that chat when they were watching the movie. Win just him and Winters. Mm hmm. Some say Buck changed after he was shot in Holland. Maybe. But I know something happened to him when he saw a Toy and Garnier on the ground. Ah, oh, feel for Buck. Buck was a great combat leader. He received the Silver Star for his part in taking out those German guns on D-Day. He took everything the crowds could throw at him time and again. Oh, man. I guess he just couldn't take seeing his friends toying Garnier all torn up like that. No one ever thought any less of him for it. That's messed up. With Buck off the line, there was no longer any possible yeah, alternative yeah, to Dyke. That way a little while ago. At least none we could see. Oh, for heaven's sakes, we've still means we've got Dyke. Well, where is he? Looking for Lieutenant Dyke. We were stuck with Dyke. He's over there. No. We'd cleared the woods east of Foy. So a few days later, E Company and the rest of the 506 cleared the woods west of Foy. They're showing why, um, why they're elite. Hmm. First Sergeant Lipton, you organize things here, and I'm going to go for help. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what he did. It's so, it's so weird. Don't do it anymore. Especially the part about what he said to me. It doesn't do anybody any good, okay? Yeah, I got you. All right. I hear what Lipton's saying. It, it... <laughs> oh my god, again? Oh! The, the hole got hit? Yeah. Oh um, This is relentless. This is mad. Oh my god. Oh, what is that? Ooh. What is that? What are you? Is that a grenade? It's a, it's a bomb. Oh my god. It's a... What is it? It's a dud. The shell that hit the foxhole Luz and I were in was a dud. That was a shell. So if it actually went off, they would have gone as well. Larky's best friends in the company had been comped in Muck and Pankala. That's messed up about Muck and Pankala. How come they're not advancing? Is it that they're not quite enough? Are they just holding the line? Is that what it is? I think for now. Later that day, we were back in our old position overlooking Foy. 
We were all worried about malarkey. When we're starting to hit malarkey. You say you wanted to uh, bring a Luger home for your kid brother? Why don't you give him that? <laughs> well done, Lipton. You be careful with that. Yeah, please don't shoot your leg off. Being even 50 yards back from the line just for an hour or two could make a big difference in a soldier's state of mind. I saw a soldier try to dig a foxhole with his bare hands. Private. Oh he didn't God. notice that he torn off all his fingernails. Oh, man. Oh, God. Fear is poison in combat. Oh, man. Something we all felt, but you just didn't show it. You can't. It's destructive, and it's contagious. Buck was never the same after seeing Toy and Garnier get hit that day. I guess he just needed some time away from it all. The barrages on January 3rd and the shelling on January 9th marked a low point in the war for many of the men in E Company. We lost so many. I was afraid the men would lose focus, suffer a drop in morale. And that was dangerous, especially in combat. More of which lay in store for us. He'd be a good leader. Why don't they make him? I have no confidence in our CO, sir. Lieutenant Dyke is an empty uniform, Captain. Good, good, good. He's not there, sir. He's gonna have to make decisions, sir, and I... I gotta tell you, sir, I think he's gonna get a lot of easy company men killed. Damn straight. I said what I had to say. There was nothing Winters could do. Yeah, he can't. Yeah, because, like I said, it's rank. It's rank. He knows people, innit? It's connections. You gotta move in there fast. Get in there before they can bring their mortars and artillery down on you. Clear? Clear. I'm relying on you. I hope we get proved wrong and, and Dyke actually... Comes through. Comes through, yeah. The, the men need it. And he's yawning. He's and, he's, and he's yawning. But I mean, the men need him to, to pull through. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't stop. Why is he saying hold up? What? You can't hold up in the. Don't move! Get me Foley on the radio. Get out of there! Move! So I think we should take cover. Find some cover! Only you get back here where I can see you! God damn it! I could punch that guy. Yeah. Oh. Fall back! Why no, is he saying go fall forward. back? Yeah. Captain Winters, you have supplanted! Okay, okay, Foley. Foley! You take your men! You take your men on a flanking mission around the village and attack it from the rear! We will provide suppressing fire! We're gonna be kind of alone! What? We will provide suppressing fire! They're gonna die. He's gonna get these men killed. Ramirez, two guys, take them, go! Find some cover behind this table. And another one down. Shit, man. That must be so hard. Spurs, get yourself over here. Get out there and relieve Dyke and take that attack on in. Finally. Oh. Are they still there? Yeah, he, this guy's in the Terminator. Oh, I forgot. Spears is Terminator. I'm taking over. They're pinned down by a sniper. I believe he's in the building with the cage in the roof. All right, I want mortars and grenade launchers on that building till it's gone. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody else follow me. Yes, sir. That's how you do it. Ooh, good shot. Good move. Oh, shit. Is he, Ooh. Is he okay? Did I lift him? I think... Oh, God, he's yeah, okay. Yeah, no, just... Where is he going? What is he doing? Spit? Is that Spears? Is he? He's just going That's head Spears. first into yeah, everything. The Germans didn't shoot at him. I think they couldn't quite believe what they were seeing. After he hooked up with the I Company, he came back. What? That is not He he is <laughs> a he's a fucking Terminator. Yeah. He's the real deal. So, hang on. so he ran through the town while it's filled with Germans, 
spoke to the other team and then ran back. He took over 100 German prisoners. After that, it was mostly clean. They need to get rid of Dyke, man. 100%. Don't give a shit. Yeah, fuck connections, man. Yeah. Liability. What a liability. Oh. Ooh. Where? What no, a nice. shot. Mellet, Heron, Sawasco, and Ken Webb were killed by a sniper. There would have been more if it hadn't been for Shifty Powers. Is that Dyke? He got shot. Did he? I don't, I don't know if that was him. The bull. You hit bad, Perconti? Beautiful wound. <laughs> Perconti has an ass wound. <laughs> oh, he's got <laughs> A lot of the men thought once we'd taken Foy, they'd get us off the line, ship us back to Mormalon for a breather. But that wasn't to be. Oh, damn. Two days later, we took Noville, and after that, Rashawn. I mean, unless they took... Wow. Took back places, you're elite for a reason. We spent our night in Rashamp in a convent. It was the first time we'd spent a night indoors in a month. I hope it was calming. The sisters there brought in their choir to sing for us. It was heaven. Okay. We'd come into Belgium with 121 men and officers plus 24 replacements. That's 145 total. We were going out with 63. What? Our month in Belgium cost us one good officer, Buck Compton, and one bad one, Norman Dyke. We gained a good one in the end, so I guess we came out ahead. That's true. Yeah, but he's the Terminator. He's, yeah. You want to ask me, don't you? Ask you what, sir? You want to know if they're true or not, the stories about me? These men aren't really concerned about the stories. They're just glad to have you as our CEO. They're happy to have a good leader again. I've been told there's always been one man they could count on. Damn fucking straight. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> no, sir. It's you, mate. Hell, it was you for a sergeant. Yeah. You're not going to be first sergeant much longer, first sergeant. Sir? Making company, yeah. Winners put in for a battlefield commission and sink approved on your behalf. Well deserved. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Well deserved. Yeah, 100%. Hey! What do you want? Yeah, thanks for crapping in our foxholes. Yeah, shit. It's my pleasure. <laughs> hey, look who's taking up smoking. Beyond the wounded and killed every man at the best time suffered. Men and hit by shrapnel and bullets were nevertheless casualties. Stephen Lee Ambrose. Yeah, makes sense. I'm not sure that anybody who lived through that one hasn't carried with him in some hidden ways the scars. Perhaps that is the factor that helps keep easy men bonded so unusually close together. Captain Richard Winters. And that's the end of the episode. Speechless. Yeah, that was a oh, that episode because it was quite a heavy. It was, was a lot like... heavier than all the other episodes that we've seen because yeah. we lost we so lost a lot we lost a lot of people. We didn't lose them physically. We lost them mentally. Yeah, yeah. Like they said in the beginning, it was they, there comes a point where you stop physically mentally being able to take the pain and it's like hitting a it's the, just. The broken, it just repeatedly get broken. Um, when they're hit with what's happening around them, um, and it's sad because I think Buck Buck was a good example of that because we knew he wasn't. Once he got shot, he wasn't the same. But I think, like you said, but in he, that moment, it was he, it was sort he, of it was sort of by maybe th like threadbare being held together. Yeah. And then seeing seeing Garnier, Garnier and, and and then on the floor, Terry, yeah, on the floor, um, on, yeah, on yeah. the floor, it kind of just sent him over the edge, and um, it's sad it's a, because there's a show called Band of Brothers, and it is about mm. brotherhood. We're starting to lose brothers. The brotherhood, yeah, 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 and that takes a toll on on men, especially in this specific case where there's such a tight knit unit. And yeah. it's it's what's also helped them get through things. Yeah. Having each other 
because it wasn't about yourself it was about looking the looking after the guy the person next to you yeah in your fox in your foxhole but even yeah. that didn't work out because they lost two people yeah that was messed up cover. that was that was messed up i always thought of that case like you're in this foxhole but the shells they don't they don't um there's no they prejudice they're, they're, between yeah. where the shell's yeah. gonna land and you could easily get hit in the foxhole so it was a bit it, it's it's a luck again it was luck the only thing that could help was if that tree landed on i forgot who the tree landed on now i can't remember but the no, tree but landed I think even on someone. if it had landed on them it would have still just gone through like it as in it would have no, exploded I, okay yes yeah I, I yeah i see what you mean yeah. i mean would you I, th I think the question is if you're in a foxhole and a tree lands on top of you and the more the shell explodes on the tree would the you bottom the, the bottom bit wouldn't be affected would it, it just well like, it depends I, I don't know. It might have I, don't, I don't know yeah. the crater size of because I don't think we saw it, saw it specifically well because there was just so much debris. But what yeah. the crater size of a shell would be, kind of thing. So if it hit on top uh, of a tree and you were under it in a foxhole, what would what would the? Uh, I'm sure it would shatter. And probably you you're, right. you're, you're right. You're right. You're like shit. It was uh, good. Yeah. yeah. Um. I just can't get over. We lost. We lost so many people. We, we lost Bill. Let's go on here. Yeah. Yeah. I think in terms of I, I think in terms of cinematography, that was probably one of the Yeah. I'd say best um best in it's the upset. in the sense that was horrifying some of the scenes. But well, also yeah, I mean I think depiction wise, I mean obviously the first one was good because of the, the, the people jumping out of the planes and, and that, that scene, but in terms of you mean the, the fact that the entire episode was a narration by Lipton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well, and also like the way they sh showed the explosions and tr you know, it really. Yeah, that's a very good point. Puts actually. you there. It really. I puts think the you practical, there the practical, effects practical of, effect of it of of, yeah. of blowing up an entire forest almost. Um, Dyke. Yeah, just, just Dyke. Dyke. I mean, we can't say much because the, the guy, the guy died. No, I, 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 the thing is, I think, I think when it's sad that it's sad that he died. Yes, but it's also sad that he was there because not off merit, but off connection. Yeah, that, yeah I think sad. that is that's a crime in itself because it's not. It's a danger to the men. It's, it's a day, yeah. You're losing people because you don't know how to command, or, or, or from what we were told, obviously, and what we saw. His... But even even if we didn't, uh, and he just could just follow instructions, and because Winter was like, we just go ahead, just move forward, and just because he couldn't spot someone, he was like, fall back, and then it got in his head yeah. because he's obviously not a good leader, and in, yeah. in the heat of the moment, he blanked. He literally blanked. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and it, it, it was to the his decisions were felt by the men around him who lost their lives unfortunately they didn't and trust him. They, they no but i mean him telling to, telling him to flank around they're getting shot they're getting killed by the sniper um so yeah kind of messed up um it's it's astounding to see that lipton actually held throughout all of it because he was there from the beginning as well and um yeah we uh, did say halfway through the episode that he should have been like he is the choice he he's he's the right choice yeah um spears is just a <clears throat> he's just a terminator yeah but, do you know what makes that story that last bit so amazing is that it must be true you you wouldn't add that in for yeah effect yeah that, that, yeah. If that, yeah yeah that, i know what you mean i know in, what you mean i know what you mean yeah, in, when you see it in movies you're like well that's for cinematography that's for the cinema effect of things but obviously this is just a show about what happened and for someone to actually do that in real life and you know regardless of whatever you've heard of him is legendary it's brave in its own right I mean, like I said, it, the... he's a crazy bastard. All right, let's well, just call yeah, it what it is. Yeah. He ran through a frigging town full of Germans to go get give a message and run all the way back. Uh, I think what made it even better was the fact that they showed the Germans looking at him. <laughs> yeah, like, what? like not what realizing what the hell is going on here. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's just 
yeah he's a crazy bastard but he did say at one point in the in the beginning i can't again i can't I've already forgotten who he was talking to he was talking to blythe it was, was, he was you're he right was you're right he was talking yeah. to blythe and he was just like you gotta switch off you gotta yeah, switch off because if you dead. don't you don't you're already dead yeah. maybe in that moment he saw it as if i don't do something now then something bad may happen or, yeah, or yeah, i may yeah. be indecisive so let me be decisive in what I'm, I'm trying to do it. here and just go and get it done um but um i'm i'm happy for for that lipton also got the promotion yeah. that he deserved i'm also yeah. a bit i felt a bit gutted that winters obviously had the promote like he's he's of higher rank and he wanted to go out and there and yeah. save his men and, and he can't and yeah. The, yeah um all in all great episode uh yes but sad because we lost too many brothers too many too many men in, in the episode it's, and it's just taken taken a psychological toll on so many bark mm. is um yeah yeah but um yeah let us know your thoughts in the comments um what did you think of the episode um are there any bits that we got wrong um let us know or were there any um extra info bits of information you have on what happened in in this episode please don't hesitate to put it in the comments um but other than that please like share subscribe click the notification bell and we'll see you in the next one see ya